Hey, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today we're making a video to show you and everybody else how to create drum kits that you can easily share with your friends in Reason. This also applies to any sample library in Reason. So if you're interested in being able to make samples that you're either giving to friends, selling to people, or any of that type of thing, you're really going to need to know how to do this. So Hang in for a few minutes with me and I'll show you how to do it. Also, if this kind of content is helpful to you, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. It's just easy for you to click, but it really does matter to me a lot. And it really helps YouTube recognize that I'm actually doing stuff that people care enough about to click a little link or ring a bell. It doesn't take much from you, but it helps me out a lot. Anyway, here we go. First, let me tell you, okay, here is Kong. This is the drum kit we're gonna be using. And uh, one thing I love about Kong is that unlike many of the devices I've used, drum type machines in different uh, software drum devices, a lot of them let you use samples, but a lot of them don't let you sample, <laughs> which I don't get because I feel like it should be there. It's not that much extra code. I know I've written code that does this type of thing, and it's it's not that much extra for the coding aspect to allow uh, sampling within the application. But uh, nobody, or a lot of people don't. I don't know why. Anyway, it, and there was a time, by the way, when Reason Studios didn't allow you to do it as well. Uh, back in, uh, I believe it was Reason 5, though, is when they in implemented the ability to actually sample uh, live into the sampling devices within reason. Uh, before that you had to use an another device or something to record your audio and import those samples, just like I'm stating for other software packages, but I digress. So anyway, here we go. This is Kong. I'm going to go up here first. We're going to start by right clicking this little folder and we're going to reset it. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to clear all the samples out. Now there's nothing there. See what I'm saying? Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to sample a, you know, I'm going to make a new drum kit, we'll say, but I'm not going to make a whole drum kit. I'm just going to, I'll take a couple drums off this, uh, this drum kit that I've got loaded up here on my uh, MPC. And uh, I'm not going to distribute this. Don't worry. This is just an example. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to start with my kick. So I select where I want my kick. I usually like my kick on pad one. And now I'm just going to go right here, hold down this record button and hit the kick. And we'll go right here, get a snare, click that one, hit record again, get a snare. Let's go right over here. We'll get closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat. All right. Now we've got the sounds in there. They're part of uh, this device. Given the volume is not very loud, no worries. We'll fix that in a second. The next thing I would do is I would go over here to song samples. And you can see, if I go right here, that these are all, uh, all self-contained samples. Sample one, two, three, four. There's my kick, snare, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat. Uh, what I might want to do first is I'm going to go to each of these and edit them. And while we're here... We're going to give these a name. So one is we're going to call this uh, demo kick. Okay. And I'm going to hit this crop. Now, I don't have to do this crop if I don't want to, uh, because when we export these, we can tell reason to do that for us. But I'm just going to do it all manually so you understand what I'm doing as we go along. All right. And uh, I can tell it uh, what key I want this to play on right here. Right now it's playing on C3. That's fine. I'm going to leave it alone because I like that the way the kit maps itself out here. And uh, I'm just going to save. Okay. Now we'll go right here. There's my snare. I'm going to right click that. Edit again. We're going to crop it again. I'm going to give it a name. Demo snare. And click OK. And actually I forgot to normalize it. I forgot to normalize both. That's what I was going in here for, which is funny. So I'm going to go and edit these again, edit, and now I'm just going to click normalize. This is going to get the volume to the maximum level it can be at. Sorry about the error, but, you know, I try not to... I'm going to try not to uh, cut the video out unless I need to, and, and it shows you kind of what to watch out for. I, I feel like when I go ahead and go that route. All right, so there's my 
closed high hat. I'm just moving that over so we don't need all that extra space. Hit crop, boom. All right, normalize, and there we go. Now that is my closed high hat. Demo closed hi hat. And we'll go right here. Same thing. Gonna crop this guy down and give it a name. Demo open hi hat. All right, so now all of these files are here. Uh, they're named and they're mapped. Uh, what's not going on is these aren't named on the drum kit. We can fix that right now. We just double click the name and we can just go right here and just give these names just to make life a little easier later. All right, there we go. And uh, now, so now we've got them they're out here. Everything's good, right? Now, if I want to make this drum kit, like the whole plan here is that I want to take this drum kit now and I want to share it with a friend or I want to sell it because I created this drum kit and I want to distribute it. The problem I'm going to run into here is that typically, first of all, all my samples that I just made are embedded within this song. They're not saved externally. So if I go over here and I try and save this out, I get the, this patch cannot be saved because the reference sounds are of the self-contained in the song. Well, that's fine if it's just you and you're writing a song, you made a special drum kit just for that song, you're never gonna use it again, or you have sounds mapped in here of, you know, like a duck quacking or a plane flying by and it's all just one onesie twosie, you're gonna use it for this and that's the end of it. Um, you like that duck quacking? I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that's fine. But in most cases, you are going to want uh, the ability to uh, save this drum kit out somewhere and reuse it for something, you know? So let's show you how to do that. What you'd first need to do is go over here to file, okay? And we're gonna go to down right here. See where it says song information that says song self-contained settings? Just click that. It's under file, like I said. And now you can see what files are self-contained. These are the ones that it's trying to keep with the song. If I go and uncheck these, and now I click OK, it's going to say, OK, you see, you want to save these sounds. Where do you want to save them? This is where you need to kind of plan ahead a little bit, but I'm going to show you what, what I do. I'm going to go to my drive E. Now, drive E may not be where you want these. I don't know what drive you're gonna put them on. It's up to you. But for me, I use drive E, and then I go over here and I have a folder called samples. And now in this folder, I'm gonna make a new brand new folder just for this demo. Okay, I'm gonna call this Kong demo. So this is where I would store this drum kit when I'm done with it. So I go in here and I say, okay, well now I need somewhere to put these samples. I can do one of a couple things. I can either save my samples in the same folder as the instrument, which is fine, but I think it gets messy in the long run. So what I usually do is I make a second folder in here and I will give each one, call it samples, and then I'll call it demo kit. So I'll make a different folder for each set of samples. And now I'm gonna click in here, click okay. And now what has happened is Reason went ahead. Let's go over to drive E, samples, Kong demo, samples demo kit. And in here, you see the four sounds that we just recorded. It put them all right here. Now, when I go out here, I'm gonna, this is where it gets the part that would normally mess you up. Now I'm gonna click save and it will let me save this sound. You, what you wanna do with it next is go back to drive E, go to samples or wherever you have your stuff and then go to Kong demo, which is where I have mine. You can see the sample folder right there. And I'm just gonna go demo kit. That's my demo kit. This is the kit that I'm making for this demo. So now there we go. Now my demo kit is saved. And if I wanted to bring this, this kit into a project, I'm gonna open a brand new project so we can show you that it works. I'm just gonna to go to this PC and I'll go to drive E. You just wanna follow your path down to wherever you put it. 
And there it is, demo kit. I just drag this, I can just drag it, drop it right there. And all my files are mapped in a way that can be recovered easily for you know another person. Now, if I wanted to, I could just take this folder, let's go over here, and I could just grab this whole bit here, zip it and send it to somebody and be like, just unzip this into a folder and there's the drum kit, just open it up and go. And that's how you would distribute this drum kit to a friend or to sell it or whatever. And that is pretty much it. Now I could also show you, and I'll show you in another video, how to make this a little more custom looking, but uh, you can make as many drum kits as you want this way. And your samples will all be organized nicely. And this will keep your, your samples mapped in a way that reason can find them easy. Uh, and it doesn't ever go, oh, I can't find these samples because I've seen it a few times where you try and open up a drum kit and it's like it loads up, but the samples aren't where they're supposed to be. And all of a sudden you're you're sitting there chasing around your hard drive trying to, trying to figure out where the samples went. I've actually had it in the early days happen on products that I purchased a, a few times and it was very frustrating. So this is the way you do it correctly. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you liked the video. Please like, subscribe, and put a comment below to let me know if this was of any use to you. I appreciate you all. Have an awesome day. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe. Bye.